Welcome to Vienna, the last chapter in our exploration of Antoine Reicha, whose inventive and well-crafted piano music has largely been eclipsed by the music of his contemporaries. After his studies in Bonn alongside Beethoven, in a period of isolation and experimentation in Hamburg, Reicha moved to Paris in 1799. He failed to get his operas performed there, so he moved to Vienna in 1802, the European capital of instrumental music, to begin his career in earnest. He was 32 years old. One of the first things Antoine did upon his arrival here was to reconnect with his old friend Ludwig. One of Beethoven's letters from November of 1802 survives, in which he invites his friend Reisha to an informal dinner. Two months later, Beethoven's brother and agent, Karl, wrote to his publisher, Breitkopf and Hertel, inviting them to take a look at three of Reisha's symphonies for the possibility of publication. After this auspicious start, Reisha worked ferociously for the next six years. He wrote eight string quartets, as many string quintets, and a huge work for solo piano entitled 57 Variations on an Original Theme, or The Art of Varying. The work is an important precursor to Beethoven's Diabelli Variations, written 15 years later, and I'm sure that Beethoven knew the work. Reisha also published 36 astonishing fugues, which cemented his reputation as a troublemaker for breaking all the rules which make a fugue a fugue. And they earned him Beethoven's ire in the process. Their common interests were becoming a little too close for comfort, composing fugues, funeral marches, and large-scale piano variations. The rivalry between them grew, and the friendship suffered. Although Reisha was well known in Viennese music circles, his music didn't sell well here. So with another war on the horizon between France and the Austrian Empire in 1808, he decided to move to the one place the French army wouldn't invade, Paris. I'm now going to play an excerpt from one of Reisha's Viennese sonatas, which was only published recently, the Grand Sonate in C major. This is the end of the third movement, which bears one of Reisha's favorite indications, Capriccio. Thank you. 
How is it possible that such exciting, enjoyable music was never performed until recently? Part of the fault lies with Reisha. It seems that after his efforts early in his career to get his operas performed in Leipzig, Hamburg, and Paris, and failing, he became so disgusted with all the wasted effort that he decided to spend all of his time and energy composing and letting posterity decide whether his works were worthwhile. But part of the fault lies with us. As a performer, it's intimidating to play something that no one else has. And as listeners, we tend to gravitate towards the reassuringly familiar. Some people get quite nervous when they're presented with a piece they've never heard before. One person recently asked me, on a scale of one to 10, how good are Raish's piano works when compared to the great masters? Well, there's only one way to find out. We have to listen and decide for ourselves. <laughs> 